Welcome to our first fly sign tutorial from Uncharted Fly Fishing. My name is Kevin. I'm going to show you how to tie a really psychedelic nymph known as the holographic stone fly. If you guys can check that out. Alright, just some materials we're going to start with. Um, we use uh, primarily tungsten beads. We're using a gold 3.5mm bead today, along with a size 10 emergent caddis pattern hook, which is quite the, the versatile one, especially if you're fishing the, the ball and orange um, this summer. Alright, we're going to start tying on with a standard thread, a black thread. You can get it anywhere from your local fly tying stores. And now we're going to tie it down past the hook point, about three winds past the hook point, so we can get that body, that stone fly body that we've been looking for. Alright, if you can see this here, this is a dyed goose biot. We're going to use two of these on the back. Got to find them in equal proportion if you can see. So we're going to take two of those and we're going to tie them on one by one. There is a method to tie them on together. However, I prefer doing this so I can build up my body more accurately. Tie it along the side of your shank. And tie it up to the head. And I will cut it off now as long as it's just there we go. Perfect. Okay. Right. Our next step is we're going to take the other biot of equal length and proportion. And we are going to attach it to the right hand side. You guys can see it there, it's equal. So we're going to tie this bio down now on the right hand side. Right, there you go. Now, you don't want it when you're fishing it that the two bios come, in, come into contact with each other, which will ruin the imitation of the stonefly, obviously. So we are going to just take one wind put it in between them so they're not going to go anywhere. Alright, now we're going to take a standard Danbor medium copper wire. You can use a light wire if you may be tying a smaller pattern, but we're using this one particularly as a dropper, so that's why we're going to tie it on heavy, heavy shank, heavy wire. Alright, now what I like to do is just to not make the body too fat, I take a black cokey, simple black cokey, permanent marker, and you can just color your copper wire so you don't damage the integrity of your thorax. Alrighty. Um, we're going to take some flash now. It's a deep purple flash. Um, you can use a lighter pattern, especially for grailing. You can maybe do a, a pink or purple, light purple flash. Works really, really well. But now, for this case, when we particularly targeting yellow fish and muddies, we're going to use this deep purple because I find in the muddy water it helps us quite a bit. Alright, pretty simple. I'm going to tie on the two strands of your flash to the base, and now we're going to basically go over your fly with your flash. Make sure that you don't make your body too fat, make sure that your windings are equal and that the body is not out of proportion. It's pretty basic though, just going to tie it up to the head. You don't have to be neat with this fly, it's going to, the hard part's coming now. Right, now we're just going to tie off our flash, there we go. Simple. So you see it's covered completely by the flash. And now we're going to take our copper wire and we're going to go in the, over the flash and we're going to tie them off at the head of your fly. Alright. Quite simple. Now for this step, we're going to tie three windings back over your first copper wire turn, which is quite important. I'll show you why now. Alright, now we're going to create the front of your fly. So our abdomen is done, now we're going to start with the head, and we are going to tie on 
quite a, a thicker flash. I don't know what it's called. I think it's flash, but I'm not sure. You guys have to check that out for me. But um, my cousin, wonderful cousin, donated this to me from her bicycle. It's working really well. I'm just going to cut that off. Gonna push it down. We're going to use that actually that little piece to keep our bios in check. Right. Now we're going to use another two bios. This is going to be for the sides, and you're going to tie in front. So take your thread, tie it in the front of the head, and our first one is our left. Now that's a bit too large, so now you're going to gently pull it in until you find that it's at the right proportion. Perfect. Right. Quite simple enough. We're going to cut it off. There you go. And we're going to start on the right hand side with another one of equal proportion and length. Just remember guys, that's important. And there you go. Pretty simple. You see they're sitting on the back now, but we're going to use the Kilda Canal to um, assist us with that process. Alright. You can pull them forward. Tie one winding behind them. There we go. As you can see that, now we're going to be using Kilda Canal. It's black. You can get in a variety of colors. We also tie a variation um, of this one in particular with a brown biot and a mayfly done CDC. All right, using two feathers. Um, you can see you want it to be quite equal. These big ones you can just pull off. So you have an equal distribution of your feathers. And uh, if you haven't guys seen this before, it's a crock clip. It's basically just to keep your CDC in check so you can split your thread and put your CDC on your fly. Right. These two feathers aren't playing ball. So I'm going to take another two. Right, these are perfect. Just get them. There we go. Alright. Same process. Pull the big ones off. Right. Now we're going to fasten our CDC to our crop clip. As you can see, just like that, it's pretty simple. Some guys like to do, there's two methods to this. Um, we've been taught to split the thread, um, but you can make a something known as a dubbing loop. But this one just seems to be easier for me. Okay, now we're going to take another hook. It can be any hook, it doesn't matter. And we're going to split the thread down the center so we can put our CDC it's quite simple. Just run the hook on your finger on the thread and you'll get into it shortly. Here we go. So now our thread is split. Now we're going to just place the CDC with in the line in our thread. And now we're going to spin it so we get equal proportion. You can tap it and spin it. You roughly need about 10. Twist. Don't need more than that. Right. You're going to pull your front biots over. And just do this quickly. Just that motion is just not to capture the biots. Alright. Now, this is going to be used to push your biots forward. You see how I'm moving them forward? It's pretty simple. Once you have two or three windings, you go in front of it and you close it off. There you go. Beautiful. Alright, our next step is we're going to just take our bicycle flash over and we are going to, we, you don't want to capture any of them under the flash otherwise it looks so neat. So we're just going to push it straight down, pull it, that also pushes our bias out and do this in a not a normal motion so we don't want to trap the feathers at all. Okay guys, if you see like there's one tailing, you can pull it off. Other than that, it looks equal. Now, just make sure that your flash on the top is directly centered. You don't want it to be off the side. If you can, make a light winding and you can move it from left to right, as indicated. Alright guys, you can. it's almost done. You can finish it with a whip finish if you like. But for me, it's quite easy. Just make two turns with your thread with your fingers like this. Grab it. One, two, pull it over, just like so, run your finger up and secure it. There we go. 
now our next step is we're just going to quite easily just cut this. If you feel like there's too much flash in the front or you haven't kept enough, you can just dry dampen it with your black coat. And um, the nice thing is if you feel like you don't have enough CDC coming out, you can always turn it upside down, take a hook and gently pull it out. Many guys use Velcro, but for this pattern in particular, you shouldn't do that because you might Velcro your biots out of your thorax. So it's quite simple to basically just tease it with a hook. So you see I'm pulling out some fibers now. It's looking really beautiful, natural, quite buggy. And um, I really hope it catches you guys some fish. There you go. That is the holographic stonefly. If you guys enjoyed the tutorial, please like.